Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena. We pray at this Mass for all the intentions already mentioned. We also pray for every one of us here present and all those who are joining us through social media that God in His goodness we meet us all at the point of our needs grant us every one of our good heart desires. We pray for ourselves, we pray for our families, we pray for our children, we pray for our employees, we pray for our country Nigeria, we pray for divine healing for all the sick, we pray for good health of mind and body, we pray for speedy recovery for all those who may be encountering one problem or the other. We ask for God's divine intervention upon them. We pray for all who are facing challenges in life. We pray for God's divine light, guidance and direction. We pray that God may grant them solution. Everything that causes us sleepless night to bring them before God. We ask that God Almighty will bless our benefactors, we bless our donors, all those who contribute towards our success as a parish, that God in His goodness will reward them abundantly. To celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to find our sins. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thoughts. Therefore, I ask Blessed Virgin Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us life everlasting. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who set Saint Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in our contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. From the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his company set sail for Pythos and came to Pega in Parphylia. And John led them and returned to Jerusalem. But they passed on from Pega and came to Antioch of Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of synagogue said to them, say, Brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and motioning with his hand, said, 
men of Israel, and you that fear God. Listen. The God of these people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted hand, he led them out of it. And for about forty years, he brought them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed several nations in the land of Canaan, and he gave their lands as an inheritance for about 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Samuel the son of Kish, a rich man, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king. Of whom he testified and said, I have found in David the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's posterity, God has brought Israel his Savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John has preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but one but me one is coming. The sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O oh God. I will sing forever of your mercies, O oh God. I will sing forever of your mercies, O oh God. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands fast as the heavens. I will sing forever of your mercies, O oh God. I have found my servant David. And with my only oil anointed him, my hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. My mercy and my faithfulness shall be with him. By my name this man shall be exalted. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will sing forever of your mercies. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and have washed our sins in your blood. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples, he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. It is that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. 
I tell you this now before it takes place. That when it does take place, you may believe that I am He. Truly, truly, I say to you, He who receives anyone whom I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Our servant is not greater than his master. One of the temptations Jesus faced was the temptation to pride. Satan told Jesus to jump down from the pinnacle of the temple in the presence of the people so that by so doing, God would send angels to prevent him from crashing and people would begin to refer him, assuming that he came down straight from heaven. This temptation to pride remains forever rife among ministers of God today. It is a temptation to make ourselves appear like gods, greater than the ordinary. It is a temptation to make people believe that we are closer to God and so therefore and so higher, more important, more sophisticated, more intelligent, wiser than other human beings. Jesus teaches us in today's gospel passage that a servant is not greater than his master. Nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. John 13 verse 16. To get the message Jesus is passing across, we have to read the last verse of today's gospel passage. Jesus says, Very Truly, I say to you, he who receives anyone who I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. In very simple terms, Jesus is saying that if we are successful in carrying out our task as his ministers, the glory does not belong to us, but to him who sent us. If miracles happen, if thousands receive the message and decide to repent and change their lives, it is not the case that they received the preacher. No. Rather, they receive Jesus Christ. And because they receive Jesus Christ, they also receive God the Father. The preacher has no right whatsoever to boast. I have come to realize that it is not what we say or how we say it that touches the heart of people. It is the message itself. Because Jesus Christ is contained in his world. Jesus Christ is in his world. And so when you hear the word of Jesus Christ, the preacher doesn't matter. Who he is doesn't matter. It is Jesus Christ himself that you are receiving. And the glory should go to Jesus. In our first reading today, we hear Paul preach for the first time since his conversion. The fact that Paul 
who once persecuted the church could stand boldly to proclaim the faith shows that God can use anybody. We are nothing but instruments in the hands of God. We may assume we are holy, wise, honorable, but God can decide to walk through those whom we look down upon. A servant can never be greater than his master. Let us shun every form of pride. Let us avoid taking the glory during testimony time. You know, we have testimony time in our churches where the man of God comes out and, and as people are giving testimony, he begins to interject and say, you see that? You see that? You see? We, things are happening here. I tell you, come and receive miracle. And when you come here, you will receive. It is not the man of God that is working the miracle. And so people want to give testimony. They say, ah, please help me thank God for the God of Pastor so and so. Help me thank God for the God of Father so and so. Father so and so does not have God. It is one God in heaven. The miracle happened simply by the grace of God. It is by the power of God. It is not because of the holiness of the minister. The minister does not have any power other than the power that Jesus Christ has given to all of us Christians. When Jesus Christ said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened up to you. Jesus Christ was not referring only to his twelve disciples. He was referring to every Christian, everybody who believes. And so we should avoid giving glory to the servant rather than to the master. The minister is just a servant. I am just an instrument. An instrument. I'm just a tool in the hand of God. You see, as you listen to me, it is not just me. It is not just my word. It is God himself that you listen to. And if you decide to abide by these words, you should not come back to say, Ah, Father, thank you. No! You should go to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and say, Jesus, thank you. I heard a word today and I've decided to live a good life. It is God who has done it. We are only, we only join the person to pray. We are not the cause of the miracle. And we dare not boast about it. Jesus says, so you also, when you have done all that is commanded you, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Luke 17 verse 10. It is from the lips of St. Paul in today's first reading, in this message that St. Paul preached, that we hear the last words of St. John the Baptist. You see the way St. John the Baptist concluded his ministry. He said, And when John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but after me, one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. That was how John concluded his ministry. And that is the same attitude that every minister must have. To allow Jesus Christ shine rather than take all their glory. Remember, pride goes before a fall. But he who humbles himself 
will be exalted. Confirm Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, Luke chapter 14, verse 11, and Luke chapter 18, verse 14. May God bless his words in our hearts.
in a similar way when soft power was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my salvation for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and your best resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. The Della of Francis, our Pope, Augustine, Akubese, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we then to save. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not born yet, I'm not born yet, I'm not Thank you. 
Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourish the life of St. Catherine through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Thank you, Lord, you are holy, holy Lord, and forever.